Hey guys, what's happening? So, got this uh, CR10S5 back, and uh, I'm going to do some more upgrades to it. This is actually a customer's, and yeah, one of the issues with these big CR10S5 uh, uh, printers is that they don't heat out the whole bed. So, this actually video is more about how to safely wire an AC heated bed to a 3D printer. Uh, because I've seen a lot of videos online, and a lot of people, they're not wiring them safely. They're not wiring them correctly. You know, with ground straps to the to the bed. And, uh, I mean, they're just hooking them up. So, I mean, there's definitely some issues, you know, with uh, when you're going to convert over to AC. The main thing is... Um, people are actually... Well, one, one is they're not running the ground strap. And two is they're still, they're still using a single pole AC switch, right? So what that does is that actually keeps the neutral wire hot. So if you keep your printer plugged in, that keeps the neutral wire hot up to your bed. Now, normally a neutral wire, wire is not supposed to have power on it, but if your wire is not housed, or your, your house is not wired correctly, if you're having issues with one of your devices, sometimes power can be backfed up the neutral wire. And actually, you would actually have 100 some voltage up on your neutral wire, sometimes 110 volts. And then... The worst thing, what you want to do is, so because these things are moving back and forth constantly, you know, 24-7 or whatever, like, what do you print with? But, you know, eventually these wires are going to become frayed and broken. So if you actually have a short on your board, AC, right, and you touch your frame, you're the ground. You're going to get shocked. Um, so this one here, I'm going to replace the uh, board. Um, this is actually my, my undermount kit that I designed uh, a few years ago. And I just actually did an, another undermount kit for another customer. But yeah, I might be doing the uh, same thing as the other bed. The, uh, the other guy actually already had the AC bed on there, and I just had to wire the solid state relays. So I'm basically going from a MOSFET to a uh, solid state relay. But I have to make an adapter plate, you know, out of aluminum, because this will help dissipate the heat a little bit. All right, so I gotta get this printer up. Just these big printers, are, they're so hard to deal with. They're so big. But here's another printer I'm working on too. This is pretty cool. This is a commercial version of the Verone. Um, but I'm actually making a video about this. This will be up next. Waiting for the board. So this board actually runs RepRap firmware. Uh, but we're going to be converting this back to Marlin. Just because there's no support for this board and the drivers are actually having problems. They're all burnt out or something. We're not getting any output on them. Um, Alright, so that video will be coming next. Converting that one to Marlin. But Alright, so i got to get this one finishing out the door. But let me show you this. Um... This thing was like 130 bucks, but uh, I don't know if I wanted a detail. Um, so it's 300 watt, 120 volt. This should. The issue with the CR10 S5 is the heated bed only goes out to about here. They're not heating the full bed. So the issue with this customer is he's trying to print something really big and he can't get the outside layer lines to stick. Um, you can see there's tons of glue on the outside layer lines. Um, so this bed, the cool thing is because, because it, you know, the original bed is 12 volts, so it takes forever to heat up. This thing will actually heat up way faster, and you'll be able to go higher temps uh, running the AC, direct AC. Just because the power supply is, you know, when you get to a certain, you know, with, with voltage, right, the lower the voltage, the, the more amperage you have. Uh, so you need thicker wires, but with AC, because you have higher voltage, you can use you're you're basically pulling less current, less amperage, so you can use thinner wires. So think of a car, right? Let's say I got like a car amplifier. You basically have this amplifier, but you have a gigantic thick cable powering the amplifier. It's because it's 12 volts, and you're pulling a lot of amps. But if that was 120 volt, you could get away with a much th smaller cable. So it's it's current that determines the size of the cable. All right. Um. All right, so I gotta flip this around. I gotta find a place to flip this around. I can't even get this thing on my, on my workbench. It's so big. Um, I gotta take the bed off, unscrew it. Yeah, this is a, like a sticky, sticky stuff here. So this is actually the printer that I actually designed the undermount kit on. So if you want this, it's on my Thingiverse page. Um, but yeah, this is actually where I actually did all the measurements and designed it. Um, all right, so this is what I was talking about. See, the, the heated bed only goes out to here. So it doesn't even heat the full bed. 
Um, like it's, you know, if you try to put something big over here, it just won't stick, you know? Even though it gets warm, it's just not hot enough to stick. So, I'm gonna take the, looks like I have to take the bed off here. Or I guess, I mean, the frame will stay, but maybe I just need to... Alright. Um... Because I originally ran the aluminum uh, spacers in here. Like I originally like the with the, the Creales, it has like the spring in there. But anytime you go to a BL Touch, you always go to fix mounts. All right. But I noticed that he. It's almost like it's glued on there. So maybe I can get it without having to pull the bed off, but. Most likely I'm going to have to pull this glass off because I'm going to have to get to the screws behind here to release that thing. But, alright, I'll take a look. i got to take out the uh, MOSFET here. Got the ground wire. So yeah, it's provided by 12 volts to the bed. Uh, let's take a look and see how I had this. Okay, so I had a different... I had this one flipped around the other one. So, um, yeah, this is obviously the ground on the mains. I, don't, I really hate that they use red. I mean, because it's not 220. I wish they would have used white wire. You know, with like 220, you'd actually you was like one one leg would be red, one would be black, and the neutral would be white. But it bugs me that they're using red for the neutral wire. You know, we're here we're in, in North America. We use white for neutral wire. All right, so this will show you the uh, kind of like the bad design. I mean, this should have at least been 24 volt. I guess back then they were kind of running 12 volt, but I mean, this printer is probably five or six years old. Um, so yeah, you can see the heated bed it doesn't go all the very edges. So what you can sometimes do is you can like over like you can heat it. Uh, let's say if you're printing like PLA, you're doing 60 degree on your bed. You can maybe heat this up to like 70 or 80. But the problem is the power supply can't handle that sort of heat. So I mean, it's just not good enough, you know. So easy heated bed will be much improved. It's not perfect though. I mean, it's, it still heats up more in the center than, it does, than the outside, but because it's so much higher of a, you know, voltage, you can go to much higher temperatures. You're not putting a lot of strain on the power supply. You're just going straight off the mains. Wow, this guy used actually glue dots. They actually work great. Except it's really hard to get the glass bed off, so I'm worried about breaking this thing. You know, putting some pressure on it. So I might grab my torch or heat gun and uh, see if I can heat this up a little bit, maybe soften those glue dots up a little bit. All right, I have this thing off here. Get to the screws. All right, so once you get all the screws off right on the edges, this should just come right off, yeah. Just gotta get some underneath, then this should just pop up. All right, so I'm gonna clean off the, all that stuff. Need some alcohol, need some alcohol. I want a nice clean surface to stick the new uh, adhesive to. All right, so one thing I did notice is that these things don't uh, line up 100%, like right here on these, uh, right here, for the standoffs. So the issue is it might, I'm probably going to end up doing is just putting some big, like, large pan washers here to kind of even the load so it's more even and flat. Once you get it lined up, it's as good as you can. Yeah, the holes are not perfect. They probably should have made the holes a little bit bigger. The summer tag, I mean, they're, it's pretty close. I mean, I, I, it's pretty close to the end. Go from the center outward. All right, so here we go. Take a look at that. So what I was saying is this thing is actually not going to fit in there. So if I was using the original spring, it probably would fit in there. Um, but you know, with the peel touch, you don't really want to be fighting a spring. You know, two different two different battles. So this this uh, pan washer will help distribute the load. So it's not like half caught like that, off even like that. It's going to distribute the load a little bit better. All right, so here's my conversion aluminum plate. You might have saw this in my other video that I did the exact same thing. Um, so like when I designed this box, part of the fan goes under the board. So the cool thing is I'm gonna get airflow under the under this aluminum thing. And the reason why I use aluminum versus uh, like plastic, because I could have 3D printed something like an adapter, but I wanted to kind of dissipate the heat here. So this actually acts as a heat sink. So I wanted to be kind of distribute the load a little bit better amongst the uh, the heat. So that's gonna go like that. I've tapped these for M4. I can just screw it on there. So in case the thing fails, just pull a new, put a new one in. All right, so take a look at this. So this is a double pull switch right here. So that basically shuts off the neutral and the hot. Yeah, most of these printers actually come with a single pull switch. 
uh, that would only shut off the hot wire. But I said you don't really want a hot neutral coming up to your up to your bed. So like when you keep your bed plugged in, you don't want that neutral wire coming up because I, like I said, it's if your house is miswired or some kind of device is having issues. Sometimes I've actually seen uh, power back fed. All right, so as I'm measuring the wires, so if you look at this wire here, it's a uh, yellow and green wire. That's pretty much standard for uh, AC ground. That's I'm actually feeding this back along with the uh, the bed wires, and I'm actually gonna directly uh, connect it right to the ground. So the board itself, I'm not gonna daisy chain into the power supply because that would actually be uh, overloading the other connectors. This will be actually crimped right on the actual connector, like right up here. So I'm actually gonna split off the connector because I don't want to actually overload the wires that are coming down to the power supply. So don't daisy chain don't daisy chain them into the actual uh, mains. Have them go right to the connector. So you're getting you're you're getting power right from the actual the main source. I guess they didn't go into detail, but one of the reasons why I want to run that wire is because if you look at this bed, there's no metal on metal contact between the rails and here. So everything is basically like isolated by these rubber wheels. So well, like I said, a DC power supply doesn't really matter, but when you go to AC, what happens is if you actually had a short, like eventually these will short out. Just because that's the nature of 3D printing, the wires move around, eventually they're going to break. Or if you get some kind of cut in, in this material or something like that, if this bed were to short out, if the hot wire, or even a bad neutral wire, were to short out into this frame, and you didn't have this ground wire, you if you touch this frame, you would become the ground and you get shocked. So, by having this, this will actually blow the fuse and also prevent you from getting shocked. Alright, so the, actually the uh, bed itself is not polarity specific, so it doesn't really matter for which one's hot and which one's neutral. Um, if there was an issue, it would be, this would be actually color coded. Um, Alright, so I have the neutral wire is going to come out here, the ground wire. And then I have one, the other side, the hot wire is going to go into the solid state relay. And then I'm going to put a JST connector on this, this is the thermistor. And then the, the bed output, which is controlled by a MOSFET, is going to feed into the uh, the solid state relay, positive and negative terminal. So if I put a JST connector on there, you're going to need to get like a kit on this on Amazon. I think it was like $8 for this. You'll need to get some pretty decent uh, crimpers. I'll put links down below for all this stuff, like everything you see in this video. Even my undermount kit. So if you want my undermount kit, you can link down below my Thingiverse page. So i got to put a, a two-porter on there. It's not polarity specific, so it's just it can go either way. It doesn't matter. It's basically a, a thermistor. It's just basically a, a resistor. Right. It takes a while to get used to these things, but I've done probably about a, a few hundred of these little crimps. But yeah, you need the right tool or it's never going to work right. All right, so with any sort of main, you should always uh, never have an exposed wire. So in case somebody were to wrap their hand around and grab it, you don't really want exposed wires if you can prevent it. So I shrink wrap all those wires. But hopefully this makes sense. So, like I said, you have the double pull switch, so you're shutting off the neutral and the hot. But also, the bed directs the bed. One side goes to the power supply, you know, and the other side goes directly to the bed. So I'm not daisy chain off this the power supply wire. So I'm not overloading this one single wire. It's being fed directly on this trace. So this trace can actually handle a lot more power than this actual wire can. Same thing with this, right? So one side feeds the power supply. The, the other side feeds the actual uh, solid state relay here. All right, so it's a sanity check for grounds. Just make sure this thing is grounded. So the point is, you're probably, because this is painted, you're not going to get good contact on that, but um, in case this thing is shorted out and you touch the bed, uh, you wouldn't become the ground. You wouldn't get shocked. At least it would pop a fuse. So if it was grounded properly and it shorted out, it would pop the fuse. The fuse inside there. Alright, so I get this thing first power. And I need to do a thermistor check. So it should be obviously a similar temperature. They're 100K resistors or thermistors. So it should be very similar to the hot end because it should be the same. Alright, 24 on the hot end, 25 on the bed. Now let's do a... What's up with this thing? 
I fix this LCD, man. It's like Jack. All right, I'll preheat the bed here, and I've actually messed with this brand of solid state relay before, and there should be an LED right there, so that should come on. So I'm gonna hit the. Uh... All right, so it's gonna heat up, and then what it'll do is once it gets to operating temperature, which I think is it's, it's default model is 70 degrees. Uh, once it gets to 70 degrees, it will start trickling. So because it can't keep on going, it has to maintain that heat. Another thing too is once you first heat it up, you're probably gonna have to crank these down a little bit more too because this little silicone thing will become soft. So you have to crank that down a little bit uh, just because it will actually kind of shrink a little bit. All right, um, well, it will compress and then this the screws will become loose. Let's feel. Yep, getting hot. So I'm probably gonna test it up to 100 degrees Celsius. Stuff on there. Yeah, it's gonna heat up a lot faster too. AC beds heat up so much faster than the DC beds. Yeah, the 12. Can you imagine this big bed with 12 volts? It took forever. 54. Yeah, this is a huge bed. This is 500 by 500. And there's. So it's up to 70 degrees. Feels warm. Verify. 71. And what this will do, this will shut on and off. It will trickle it until it went on. It will, when it, it's just going on and off to kind of keep it at a steady temperature. So it will go on, off, on and off. But it will measure feedback from the thermistor, Marlin, and it will shut the... Well, it, the MOSFET here, the bed MOSFET, is basically triggering the, uh, the solid state relay. So like I said before, we had a MOSFET in there. So it's the exact same thing. A MOSFET is for DC and a solid state relay is for AC. All right, so I'm going to bring this thing up to 100 degrees Celsius. So the whole time, I'm just checking for uh, any issues. I mean, the heat sink is a little bit warm. My little, my own personal, my custom heat sink here. Um, but when I get the cover on, it's gonna help transition some of this airflow under the heat, or under my little thing here. Because part of the fan goes under the boards. Um, and that was actually on purpose. Um, because I wanted to cool under the board, under the drivers. So I'm just check, check, testing wires, making sure they're not hot. You know, I'm more worried about this right here. Hot wires, hot cable. Just making sure you know it's the, you have the right gauge of wire. I mean, these guys are probably never going to be running 100C, but I just want to make sure that it's good to go. 95. Then, oh, it's hot, super hot, hot to even touch. All right, cool guys. That's how you wire in a AC heated bed. Yeah, if you want any of my stuff, I'll put links down below. And uh, you want the undermount kit for your? This should actually work with the 4S too, but I designed it for a 5S. But the same thing should actually work for that printer too. Um, all right, so future videos coming up. All right, future 3D printing videos, I should say, because I make videos of all different things. Um, yeah, I make. A, I'm finishing up my CNC machines and. Other things, but yeah, look at this thing. This thing is huge, and look at in relation to the CNC machine. So it's a 400 by 400 Verone 2.4, like a uh, clone. Has an orbiter, uh, hot end. I mean, super nice printer. But from the get go, he used it. He didn't even get a chance to use it. He went to go level the bed. It crashed. I'm not sure if someone shorted out or what. But the uh, all the drivers are burnt out. So he has extra replacement boards. It runs a wrap wrap firmware. It's like it's like a duet clone. Vive Dino is a brand. Um, so it's like a commercial. You know, with a Verone kit, it's something you actually buy and put together. Whereas this is a fully assembled kit you buy. I think it was like two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars. I can't remember. Um, all right. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be putting a one well, octopus SKR octopus running Marlin. But I'll show you how to do that with the uh, and Marlin and stuff. But yeah, because you're running four Z motors. Yeah, but I'll get more into that in the next video. How I'm actually gonna make this thing work. Very nice printer though. Probably the nicest printer I've seen so far. I mean I've worked on some school school uh airwolves, which are really expensive. I mean they're really nice printers. I mean they're way overkill for a schools, but 
Um, yeah, I fix uh, 3D printers for a couple of like, my local school districts. Um, all right, cool, cool. All right, cool. All right, so that's how you do a AC hit a bed. All right, so I gotta finish up now. This uh, the board came today for this printer. So my next video will be at least my next 3D printer video will be uh, get this thing to, to come back to life. But suck is this thing is brand new. The guy didn't even use it. It you know came from China, and uh, you know he basically he started leveling it, then it just crapped out and the board died. But the guy actually has replacement boards, and it's, I've tested all the boards. Boards are fine. The drivers are bad. So it killed seven drivers, whatever happened. So, um, so I might have shorted it out, but it, all seven drivers are gone. And those are proprietary drivers you can't really buy. Um, it's, like a, it's like a clone of the Duet board. I'm kind of off track, but... All right, I'll get more into that printer when I start working on it. All right, guys, cool.